Uh, now, uh, taking this uh, this workshop ahead, I would now like to invite Dr. Shayon to begin with his first technical session on research perspectives in Indian science fiction. Over to you, Dr. Shayon. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you so much, Professor Raina, Professor uh, Gupta, for this uh, really warm introduction. And I think a very well background of this workshop has already been fleshed out uh, by uh, including Dr. Uh, Shritartha as well. And so which also actually just uh, sets the pace for me to 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 go ahead with the with the presentation. So just hold on. What I'm trying to do is trying to open up my slides. I have a very few slides uh, just where I have put down my points. And at a later stage, I would like to share the slides with Jimmy. Jimmy can circulate it amongst every one of us because in one of the slides that is in slide four, as we go ahead, there are some articles uh, which I have hyperlinked um, on the slides. And if you just click on those links, you can just open up and check out those methodological articles, which obviously is going to, I believe is going to give you a better background of understanding of my presentation. But yes, um, so, so is, I don't know, is my slide visible to all of you, if you can just confirm? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much once again. So what I'm going to, as I shared at the very uh, brief introduction of this workshop, that um, I'm specifically going to focus on the aspect of methodology. And um, for science fiction in general and the Indian science fiction in, in, in particular, and my presentation would be for around 40 to 45 minutes. And then obviously we can open up for questions, reflections and discussions. So what is my lecture plan for the next uh, 40 to 45 minutes? With respect to the methodological question, uh, I'm going to I'll make every effort to address these three questions. The first is why, uh, then this how and what. So the first question I would like to address is Obviously, why it is important, I think that it is important to reread Indian science fiction works through a transdisciplinary methodological lens. And um, obviously, before I speak of how to do it, obviously, it's a it's a fundamental question that that's going to cross across um, our mind that why it is important to engage at all. Uh, what is the problem if we just uh, imprison the narratives? of Indian science fiction within the paradigm of English literature. Uh, and why it is a problem, why it is a challenge, these are some of the aspects I'm going to discuss in the first part of my lecture. In the second part of my reflection, uh, I'm going to talk about the question about how that how we can reread Indian science fiction works through a transdisciplinary methodological lens. And uh, it's not just about the Indian science fiction works, but also the science fiction works in general as well. Uh, it can be audiovisual works, it can be written works, it can be novel, etc. And what impact we may expect uh, that the process of rereading may generate in the process. So briefly, these are the three questions that I look forward to discuss to today in the in the process of my set of reflections. Um, so coming to the first question, why it is important to reread now, um, again, as I think we have been talking about this aspect since morning that, and it's again, a very, uh, important aspect to engage with that, whether science fiction in general, or the Indian science fiction in particular, should it be just read within the discipline of English lit literature, or it also should be understood uh, in intersection with various paradigms of non of knowledges. Now, the question is, you see, when we read a particular science fiction work or when we watch a particular science fiction movie, we see that the way the characters are established, uh, the way the plots are constructed, the way the narratives are organized um, by default in a very spontaneous manner those characters, narratives, plots, they intersect with each other. 
they intersect with various sorts of various forms of disciplines that exist around us. It could be gender studies, it could be sexual studies, it could be race studies. In the Indian context, it could be caste studies, uh, it could be technolo technological studies, it could be artificial intelligence studies, and and various various other forms of uh, ideas can be taken into account when we are reading a particular science fiction work. But the question is, if we look the way a science fiction is kind of perceived within an academic institution, especially if we are talking about the curricular space, what we see is on a majority of the occasions, until or unless it is at the PhD level where you see that, okay, people are indulging in various cross disciplinary works in science fiction. But if you are taking at the honors or the master's level, a majority of the times we read science fiction within English literature. Now, as an individual, as a student, as a researcher, as a tutor, I have always, and I still grapple with this question that why we need to read a science fiction work exclusively within the discipline of English literature and why we can't engage with this space in other disciplinary aspects as well. Now, just because is it just because the term fiction is associated with science? So it by default has to be a sort of English literary thing. Well, for me, at least as an individual, I feel for me, that is very problematic. And that is, in fact, I would go to the extent of arguing that it is a sort of generating a disciplinary stereotype on the one side. And on the other side, it is also a way of not allowing other discourses to join in this space of English literature. Now, so obviously, if you have to overcome this challenge, if you have to overcome this problem, what we need to do is it is important to generate transdisciplinary interpretative possibilities. Now, obviously, what do I mean by transdisciplinary interpretative possibilities? The first and the foremost thing is when we are reading, now you see any sort of knowledges that are produced around us. Let's let, let's forget Indian science fiction for some time. Let us look into the general ways in which knowledges are produced around us, whether it's a oral sort of narrative, written narratives in terms of songs, music, acting, performances, and in whatever ways we produce knowledge around us, it is by default spontaneously it is always transdisciplinary in nature now whether we accept whether we don't accept that's our individual perspective but we can't deny the fact that every sort of knowledge that is produced around us cannot be imprisoned within a set or within a particular discipline because it is always in interaction with various other disciplines various other paradigms of knowledges. So when I propose that let us indulge in transdisciplinary interpretative possibilities specifically for Indian science fiction, I am not proposing something new. I am not discovering something new. It is already there, right there into our existing space. What I am trying to do is trying to invite all of us to rethink the way we produce knowledges imprisoned within specific disciplines, number one. Number two, then by imprisoning, imprisoning knowledges within specific disciplines, we try to generate a sort of hierarchies around us, which is again very problematic to say, okay, science fiction best fits in English literature, science fiction best fits in gender studies, etc., which is again very problematic because the moment we generate these sort of hierarchies, we are indulging into a problematic performance of negating certain ideas and including a selective set of certain ideas that appeals to us in some way or the other. So to break away, to shatter these problematic hierarchies, you know, what is important for us is to indulge in a transdisciplinary interpretive possibility of interpreting science fiction in general. And obviously, as we are speaking in the context of Indian science fiction, so I will bring in the question of Indian science fiction in particular. Now, number three point, 
why I feel it is important to reread is, you see, whenever we are interpreting science fictional narratives, now usually what happens, like a very basic layperson's definition of Indian science fiction is where you indulge in the existing logical narratives of science, technology, engineering, and various other dynamics that intersects with imaginative possibilities. That is a very simple layperson's definition where we have something which is realistic, which is logically proven out there and something which may not be logically proven, but is something which is emerges out of our own imagination. And when those two are blended, it gives birth to science fiction. Now, when you read any work, and I'm pretty sure uh, you must have read or you must be going through while hearing my lecture, uh, the works that have been shared by Dr. Shridhar, though I'm not aware what short stories have been shared. But if you read through those works, I'm very much sure you will find a lot of disciplinary dimensions that are part of those work. They could be technological, they could be artificial intelligence, they could be cultural, they could be based on gender. They could be based on geographical uh, dimensions and probably various other aspects. Now, what happens, you know, when we are thinking around science fiction, science fiction is a very interesting creative space. Science fiction, if you read a lot of not every work, I'm not trying to generalize and say every sort of work for science fiction, but there is a lot of science fiction works. If you read them, you will see that it is very difficult to fit that particular work in a very specific disciplinary space. You will see that it is kind of very fluid and porous in nature, and it interacts with various, various dimensions of thoughts, various experiences of our existence around us. So science fiction interpretation is not just about writing literary works or writing about essays, but science fiction works can also enable us to present our ideas, to present our interpretations in through using various sorts of creative methods. It could be videos, it could be music, it could be painting, it could be digital art, hand paintings, crafts, and various ways. Because science fiction itself is a very interesting and creative space. And that is through a lot of creativities, science fiction space emerges. So to reread, to, the invitation to reread is also an invitation to think that what are some of those creative methods, apart from writing essays and chapters and papers and books, what are some of those creative methods that we can individually and collectively use to interpret science fiction works or specifically Indian science fiction works? And obviously, the very in important and obvious last point that why we should reread is to open up various unique and new possibilities of interpretations, probably, which we may not have engaged so far, which we may not have thought so far to reread the fiction, to reread, for instance, you know, um, example, let us, I, I think, which also was raised uh, kind of by Professor Raina, that um, where we, uh, you know, on the one side, often now a new tradition has come up in the Indian science fiction writing, Indian science fiction thinking is to bring in, associate the established myths in Indian cultural space in general to associate with science fiction, which is again interesting. Now, already there is a lot of debate around this whole question, whether myths are true or false, if they are logical, if they are imaginative in nature, and a lot of debates have taken place in favor and against all, the, all of these questions. And then associating it with science fiction actually re-invites us and, you know, kind of enables us to rethink this whole paradigm of myth within this area of artificial intelligence, within this area of technology, within the space of engineering, within the space of cultural studies, within the space of gender studies. Obviously, they bring up various fictional elements. Those are mostly very imaginative in nature. But at the same time, we can't deny the fact that repositioning, recontextualizing mythical characters, recontextualizing mythical narratives within various 
um, fictional and realistic spaces in the contemporary era is also a way of giving a spark to our multiple ways of imagining the reality in our era. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I will move into uh, the second part of my of my reflections. And um, yeah, so I have changed my slide. So please, can you confirm if my slide change is visible to all of you? Yes. Okay. So um, the second part of my reflection is obviously now I have briefly discussed the question why. You see, there is a voice in the background. Can it be stopped, please? Yes, yes, I have muted him. Okay. Um, okay, so now we come to the question, uh, the second question that is how to reread. Um, so first I have discussed why we need to reread this or revisit the whole way of interpreting science fiction narratives, Indian science fiction narratives. And the second part is how to read. Now, as I shared these, all the four points, uh, each of these points, they have um, an article you can see already the link when I'm putting my cursor out there. So uh, once obviously I'm done with my presentation, I'll be very happy to uh, you know send you these um, article uh, this particular slide and you can access these articles by clicking on just on these points. Um, but prior to that, as I say that I'm exclusively going to focus on the question of methodology what could be some of the possible ways of reading some of the possible methods of rereading the indian science fiction paradigm and also let me uh, clarify at the outset that this is not just the four ones which are available but there are many other methods that can be used to reread indian science fiction works in a very cross disciplinary perspective but i have specifically selected these four spaces now, one question, the first question is positionality. And I believe this particular method of reading and interpreting applies to any kind of work that we indulge with as it goes with Indian science fiction. Now, when we walk into a classroom, I'm pretty sure uh, even today in the audience as well, there are a lot of people who have joined from different parts of India. It's not that they're just based or they're originally based in Kurukshetra, but there would be people across different parts of North, South, East, West uh, India. And belongingness to different parts, different geographical space is not just a physical belongingness. We all know that. It is about various forms of cultural belongingness, linguistic belongingness, um, and various other aspects, so uh, social belongingness, religious belongingness. So when we come from different parts, different geographical spaces, we also bring in a varieties of contexts, varieties of cultures, varieties of traditions, religions, beliefs, practices, lifestyles. Now, my question has always been, and again, it emerges from very personal uh, set of experiences. Excuse me, Dr. Shayon, uh, the next slide yeah. is not visible. It is the same first slide there is this lecture okay. plan why how and what that we are okay at. yes i mean that's that's why i was just um wondering what le uh, let me do one thing let me just reshare my um re reshare my slides all right um now is it visible how to reread Can you all see my slide? How yes, to read it? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so now, uh, as I was talking about the first point, the question of positionality. Now, why it is important to take into account wherever we are reading a work, whenever we are interpreting a work, including Indian science fiction, why it is important to take into account our positionality to acknowledge the diversity of interpretations around us. Now, whenever we bring art, now maybe we are reading just one particular text. Maybe let us take the examples of the texts that have been shared by uh, our co-speaker, Dr. Shiddhartha. Now, probably you are all reading the same set of text that has been written by an Assamese author. 
it is the same set of text you are going through the same set of characters you are going through the same set of stories but you personally all are positioned in different cultural political social gender caste class religious and various other contexts now for some of you it can be very directly relatable some of you the text could be distantly relatable and for some of you maybe it could be entirely fictional in nature now it is important for all of us whenever we are sitting together and interpreting a particular text let us not force each other to interpret in a very so called you know the mainstream manner let us not interpret the text in a so called indulge uh, by indulging ourselves in a popular set of interpretations which are widely known across the world that is a very problematic way of interpreting a text rather what is important is to acknowledge our respective positionalities maybe our interpretations will all differ from each other maybe our interpretations are going to be in conflict with each other probably we would not accept each other's interpretation in any ways but that doesn't mean that our interpretations are wrong it is about more and more we have conflictual interpretations more and more we have a multiplicity a diverse forms of interpretations more and more we are going to have new sets of ideas new sets of thoughts around the aspect of indian science fiction to come to the forefront so it is very important to indulge through the method of positionality that wherever we are positioned whether as individuals whether as communities it is important to acknowledge that positionality and try to interpret the text you know from those sets of positions and i think again it very much connects to professor raina's reflection that how he wants how in fact he did an interpretation of jane austen in a very very local context which is again very interesting and a very powerful example of positionality rather than following the usual trend of eurocentric ways of interpreting bringing in a very local context and trying to position jane austen in a very local context and that could be applicable for every other text including any sort of indian science fiction text as well the next thing is if we can acknowledge these diverse sets of positionalities what we are indulging ourselves is we are trying to generate a very powerful intersectional space around us and that is what leads us to this whole method of intersectionality that is where what it means we create a space where maybe for instance i wish to interpret a text from the lens of gender studies my colleague wishes to interpret a text from the lens of queer studies my another colleague wishes to interpret the same text from race studies another trying to do it from caste studies another trying to do it from the lens of urban studies and then we all share our thoughts with each other and each of our thoughts because it is based on the same text or the same set of text there is always a possibility that maybe our lens of interpretations from our respective positionalities are different but they all intersect with each other they all speak to each other they all interweave with each other and that is a very interesting aspect of interpreting any sort of text including an indian science fiction text because for me if you are reading and i go back to the same example of myths because as i shared a lot of indian science fiction works are being generated around the whole paradigm of myths in general um you see we read the same sort of myths we know a lot of mythical narratives but our you will see for instance if i take some very very uh, you know usual well known examples for example if i talk about the usually established myths of myths and legends you know of uh, you know of of ramayana and mahabharata you will always see that these texts over generations over centuries have been interpreted in so many multiple ways there could be uh, it has been interpreted from diverse caste dimensions from diverse religious dimensions from diverse cultural dimensions from diverse gender dimensions so there is always now the myth remains the same but the narratives the stories the 
higher the positionalities of the characters the social dynamics the power structures undergoes multiple levels of transformation in multiple levels of interpretation and that is the whole joy and the fun of intersectionality that we all have have our own ways of interpretation, which could be acceptable to some, which could not be acceptable to some, but it doesn't mean that we are going to indulge ourselves into uh, this whole game of rejection. Let us put all those interpretations on the same plate and try to see how they are talking to each other. And that is this whole fun of intersectional methodology. Now, the moment we acknowledge these whole narratives of positionality and intersectionality, what we also lead us to is this whole point of critical discourse analysis. Now, critical discourse analysis um, is actually a very interesting. Now, what is a discourse? Like, for instance, like any sort of communication, any sort of interaction, any sort of, you know, exchanges that leads to the production of knowledges around us. But you will see one thing and we can all observe from our respective life experiences that it is not always necessary that what we speak is what we literally mean. I repeat that it is always not necessary that what is being spoken is what is literally meant. Lot of words, lot of phrases, lot of ideas and thoughts, they are always subjected to multiple layers of thinking. They're always subject to multiple layers, which exist beyond the physical appearance of the words and the phrases. And whatever we speak in our daily life, in fact, today also sitting here, whatever I am speaking to all of you emerges from a set of my personal experiences, from a sort of set of biasnesses, set of political experiences, set of existence and various other forms of existential experiences. So I am not just speaking just for the sake of speaking. I'm trying to mean something. I'm trying to generate a, a sort of unique paradigm of thinking around this aspect of Indian science fiction. I'm inviting all of us to rethink the ways we interpret Indian science fiction. But all of these invitations, all of these reflections emerges from a set of positionalities emerges from a set of intersectional experiences and that is why my words are not just mere words my ideas are not just mere ideas it is a whole set of reflection a lot of politics society culture gender geographies and various other experiences and that is why this way this method of interpreting somebody's speech somebody's words somebody's reflections with respect to diverse contexts is what is referred to as critical discourse analysis. That is the that, that is why the word critical is used here. It could have been just been said as discourse analysis. It is not just as discourse analysis. It is critical discourse analysis because it is this word critical that invites us to go beyond the physical layers of certain ideas and phrases and try to unearth the different sorts of power dynamics, social dynamics, and the different sorts of structures that are hidden beyond those physical layers. Again, this critical discourse analysis is a very important aspect of interpretation for the sake of Indian science fiction. Because as we have been talking about, that whenever we indulge with various characters, various plots, various geographical contexts, various events, some are realistic, some are fictional, they are blending with each other, interacting with each other. You know, we all should try to understand by sitting into our respective context, even if it is a story is based in Assam, even if it is a story is based in Bengal, even if there is a story which is based, let's say, in Rajasthan, let us try to understand if we are from, for instance, let's say we are from Goa, let us try to understand within the cultural space of Goa, how it could be interpreted, how do we, how the one person coming from the cultural context of Goa try to understand the story that is based in the cultural context of Assam. And that and that would be possible if we use this whole paradigm of critical discourse analysis, where we try to take into account different cultures, traditions, lifestyles, thought processes, and try to understand how the story narrative fits into which of these spaces. 
And another very important method that I would like to share with all of you is the critical diversity literacy. Now, what is critical? Again, the word critical comes here. Let's take into account. It's not just about diversity. It's not just about literacy, but it is about critical diversity literacy. Three very crucial ideas, three very crucial points. Now, what is critical diversity lit lit uh, literacy? It is basically everything that we have been talking about. That is where we don't indulge ourselves of imprisoning the space, imprisoning the space of Indian science fiction within a particular discipline of English literature, but try to open up the multiple gateways of interaction with various other disciplines. It is also about not indulging ourselves into the performance of cancel culture. That is where we see, okay, I don't agree with you. So it means your interpretation is wrong. I find your interpretation offensive, so it means interpretation is wrong. No, that is very problematic. It could be wrong. I'm not saying every inter interpretation is right. It could be wrong. But understanding something is wrong just because I don't agree with that person is very problematic. And critical diversity literacy invites us to think that, no, my interpretation could be in conflict with somebody else's interpretation, but let us try to understand those and acknowledge those, even if you don't agree. And most importantly, critical diversity literacy is a way of that involves ourselves to understand and value each other's cultures, traditions, lifestyles, ways of thinking and ways of interpretation. That is why it is critical. Again, instead of just being loose and, uh, you know, sort of void enough to reject ideas without any sort of logic. We try to be critical and we try to think deeply and together. That is why it is called critical diversity literacy. That is the paradigm, the method through which we indulge in these sort of diverse ways of thinking in a critical manner, in a very highly inclusive manner, without rejecting each other's ideas and by acknowledging differences. That is how critical diversity literacy paradigm emerges and it is again a very important part of i believe again a very important part of indian science fiction because as i said in indian science fiction we bring in a lot of narratives about technology about myths about cultures about traditions and genders and they intersect with a lot of fictional ideas and thoughts and to acknowledge this diversity of thinking to acknowledge this diversity of imagination at the same time, to acknowledge this diversity of existence around us, critical diversity literacy, along with the other three methods of critical discourse analysis, intersectionality, and positionality are very important. Now, what I'll do is I will um, go into the next slide, and which is going to be my um last part of my presentation and then obviously we can go ahead with reflections and questions but before i go ahead i wish to confirm once again that is the last slide available what impact it may create is it visible to all of you yes yes it is visible okay excellent now um coming to the last part of my presentation so now we have talked about why we have talked about briefly talked about how and as i said that is not the end of the story there are various other methods we can use i just chose four selective spaces um, that possibly and probably i'm currently indulged in and uh, the last part is what impact it may create now what we can expect because it's a question of rereading. So what we can expect, what ways we can reread the whole paradigm of Indian science fiction. So the first one, it's clear, uh, multidisciplinary exchanges, it opens up spaces. And now you see, it has to be done in a very structured way. Now, um, it is an invitation for all of us. It is not just that this whole presentation is not just for the students, but it is also for us, the teachers and the researchers, um, who daily engage with exchanges on Indian science fiction with students that where we also try to think around how do we transform the pedagogy of teaching Indian science fiction in a very multidisciplinary manner, where through indulging guest lectures, bringing in um, 
experts in, in, in science fiction in general or Indian science fiction in particular who indulges maybe talks about or, or works on Indian science fiction, for instance, let's say from the paradigm of science and technology studies, STS, or from the paradigm of gender and sexuality studies, or from the paradigm of queer studies, or from the paradigm of caste studies, class studies, race studies, and bringing those people with an interaction with teachers and students to tell that you see, it's not just about literature. As a, as a science student, as a science expert, I can also interpret Indian science fiction in this way. As an engineering expert, I can, inter I can interpret Indian science fiction in this way. As a cultural expert, I can interpret Indian science fiction in this way. So these sorts of multidisciplinary exchanges needs to be developed. Now it appears, I'm pretty sure for many of us who are listening to me, it appears like a very, a kind of very, uh, a utopian plan sort of idea that it sounds great, but how do we apply? So obviously it is a slow process. It is going to take a lot of time to trans any sort of transformation takes a lot of time, but it needs to happen in a simultaneous and collective manner. Whereas individuals, whereas institutions, we need to come together and redesign this whole paradigm of Indian science fiction by opening up multiple sorts of exchanges with various disciplinary spaces where we design our curriculums in such a manner that invites students to engage with Indian science fiction, that invites researchers to engage with Indian science fiction, not only who are officially associated with the literary space, but also from various other disciplines. We have been talking about across universities, across the UGC level and the higher education ministry level to open up transdisciplinary uh, to establish transdisciplinary uh, curriculums, pedagogies, to open up more and more interactions between different disciplines and to break away the existing hierarchies. So Indian science fiction redesigning, reconceptualizing the paradigm of interpreting Indian science fiction in this way could be a possible way to start for me. And if you're indulging in multidisciplinary exchanges, what is also what we can do is we kind of engage ourselves into a powerful, inclusive performance of various caste, class, communities, genders, and various social spaces. So as I am bringing the Indian science fiction into the understanding, so I include the question of caste and class as well, we can bring in other other factors as well. So the moment we involve and open up multidisciplinary exchange spaces, we also invite various communities, it is not just about inviting disciplines, but the various individuals from various communities and classes and genders who are part of those disciplines are also getting a scope to indulge this with Indian science fiction across different communities. So Indian science fiction is not just again about fiction. It is also a way of generating a space for community bonding, for class bonding, for cultural bonding and exchanges as well. And the third part, the third practical impact that it may generate is obviously through transforming, which I have obviously spoken about. Uh, at the beginning, throughout the lecture, and we have been speaking about this, we have been touching on this point from different contexts so far. Uh, and it is about the transforming the interpretative scapes of understanding and interpreting science fiction. That is the ways, the methods, the structures, the theories that we use to interpret science fiction. And that is what I refer to as interpretative scapes. Now that needs to be transformed as well. And hopefully, if we try to use these methods, along with various other methods, I'm pretty sure in the in the forthcoming lecture, Dr. Shiddhartho is going to talk about, as he said, from the perspective of gender and Marxism as well, including those methods and various other methods. You know, if we try to implement these methods at an individual level, at a collective level, I personally believe that it is gradually and slowly going to open up the Indian science fiction, not only the Indian science fiction paradigm, not only to various disciplinary spaces, but it is also going to have a very strong positive impact on the ways we usually interpret knowledges around us in our real life, 
in the fictional spaces or in any other spaces that exist around us. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you.